A common challenge for the casual community of Stardew Valley is to complete the community center, which is the main goal of the game, in just one in-game year. Before I go any further, I just want to reiterate that this is just a self-imposed challenge, there's no downside to completing it in year two or beyond, and please don't feel pressured to rush the game if you don't want to. With that said, we're going to push the limits of this game. What is theoretically the earliest possible day you could complete the community center? There's so many alternate methods of obtaining items, what with getting gifts from villagers, secret rare events, and the random stock of the traveling cart, I'm willing to bet that it's a lot earlier than many of us think. So to start, we're going to go season by season to see what we can accomplish in each section. Also, you might know that the traveling cart can possibly have almost every item needed for the community center. We're going to keep that number of items that we get from there as low as possible, just so we don't have to rely on that much RNG in this theoretical run. So here is our year one spring. The first thing I want to address is actually unlocking all of the bundles in the first place. We're going to need to complete a couple of bundles to unlock all of the rooms. It's an easy enough task to have all of the spring forgeables by day six, which is the first day that you can access the bundles, so we'll go ahead and complete that. This will unlock both the pantry bundles and the fishing bundles. With access to the pantry bundles a couple of days later on the 13th, if we planted all of our crops on day one, we can complete the spring crops bundle. We could also have our five golden parsnips for the quality crops bundle. The second bundle completion will unlock the boiler room bundles. So now what we're gonna do is pretty much wipe out an entire room. This only has three bundles, all of which can easily be completed on the way down through the mines, and the mines are easily completed in spring if you know what you're doing. So we crafted one bar of each kind for the blacksmith bundle. This completion will unlock the bulletin board. We got 99 slime and 10 bat wings for the adventurers bundle, just because I find those two items to be the easiest of the bunch. That completion will unlock the vault, which is the final room to be unlocked. And then the geologist bundle, really nothing special needs to be done here. You will naturally find these probably on your way down the mines. And that is the first room completed in spring. Now, just to get this out of the way early, money is not and will never be a problem. This is because if you have seen Cordite TV's run where he tried to get 80 million gold in year one, he accomplished it. And by the end of spring, he had 2.8 million gold, which is far beyond anything you need to complete the community center. So while we don't need to go nearly as far as Cordite did, it's safe to say that by the end of spring, we can easily make all of the money we need to complete all of the vault bundles pretty handily. With all of that money, here's a quick list of everything we could accomplish with it. The farm cave has been established and we're going to choose the fruit bats. We're going to build a coop and a barn. Then we're going to upgrade both to their big variety. Then we're going to buy two chickens, one of each color, a duck, a cow, a little bit later on in the season, we'd upgrade the big barn to the deluxe barn, and we'll buy a sheep. Luckily, the sheep only takes four days to grow, so we can buy it fairly late in the season. And we'll have started upgrading some of our tools. Most importantly, the axe would get to steel, and our pickaxe would probably get to gold just to get through the mines faster. We'll upgrade our house once to unlock cooking. Alternatively, we could just hit level 9 foraging. Let's go over the fish bundles now, since they're pretty simple. For the river fish bundle, we can get the sunfish, the catfish, and the shad. The tiger trout, unfortunately, will be locked behind fall. For the lake fish bundle, we can get the largemouth bass, carp, and bullhead. Once again, we have one fish that we can't get. The sturgeon is available in summer. For the ocean fish bundle, the only one we can catch for now is the sardine. All three of the others are available in summer. Night fishing bundle, we can get the bream and the eel, the walleye being locked behind fall. For the crab pot bundle, we can complete this right now. We'll say that we found an oyster, clam, mussel, and cockle all just chilling on the beach. And we're gonna say that we got a crab from a rock crab in the mines. And so that is enough to complete the crab pot bundle. For the specialty fish bundle, we are able to get the ghost fish because we've been through the mines. We're able to get the wood skip because we upgraded our axe to steel and went to the secret woods for it. And since we already finished the vault bundle, we can get the sand fish. That leaves only the puffer fish left, which we will get in summer. So now let's wrap back around to the pantry bundles. 
Safe to say we could complete the construction bundle. 198 wood isn't particularly hard to come across. Stone, we've been through the mine, so we have free access to it. And as said before, we've upgraded our axe so we can get all of that hardwood just from one day in the secret woods. That is another completed bundle. For the exotic forging bundle, there's many ways we can complete this, but I'll just say that we got a cactus fruit and a coconut from the desert, and we tapped one of each tree for each of their products. And that's enough to complete the exotic forging bundle. As for the summer forging bundle, we can get a spice berry from our fruit bat cave. And then for the fall forging bundle, we can get a wild plum from our fruit bat cave as well as a blackberry and common mushrooms can be found in the secret woods, leaving only the hazelnut left. For the winter foraging bundle, we can get a crystal fruit dropped from dust sprites, and blue slimes can drop a winter root, halfway completing our winter foraging bundle. Moving on to the pantry bundles, there's really only two things we can touch here. The animal bundle we can complete with all of those animals we bought earlier. They should have just enough time to produce all of this within spring. And for the Artisan Bundle, we're going to keep it really simple and just say we got really lucky with the Fruit Bat Cave and got the six different fruits. Next, we have the monstrosity that is the Bulletin Board Bundles. Let's look at the Chef's Bundle first. We can get that maple syrup from the maple tree we tapped. And lucky for us, the Maki Roll is sold at the saloon for 300 gold and you start out with the fried egg recipe. All of their ingredients are easily grabbed, so since we upgraded our house, we can easily cook both of them. And those are the only parts of this bundle we'll touch for now. We could go to the Skull Cavern and get a prehistoric floor and find a fiddlehead fern, but there's no need for us to go that far. For the fodder bundle, we just need to cut 10 pieces of hay and grab some apples from our fruit bat cave. Easy as that, we can't get the wheat until summer. For the enchanters bundle, it is possible to get kegs early enough to grab some wine. You just gotta focus on farming a bit. And of course, oak resin from an oak tree. And oh, would you look at that, we just happened to get a rabbit's foot from the very first serpent we knocked out. Oh, and look, a red cabbage seed as well from the second serpent and we grab a pomegranate from the fruit bat cave. And that will actually complete the enchanter's bundle. For the field research bundle, luckily we had the foresight to build a fish pond. We put a crab in it, and over the course of about nine days, built it up until it had 10 crabs. Eventually we got a beautiful nautilus shell from it. That takes care of the Nautilus shell, you can get a frozen geode and a purple mushroom from the mines, and you can fish up a chub pretty much whenever you want. For the dye bundle, we can grab a sea urchin from the tide pools. Aquamarines can be found from gem nodes in the mines. We'll get that duck feather from the duck we got earlier. And as with the purple mushroom, we can get a red mushroom from a mushroom floor on the mines. Unfortunately, we don't have a red cabbage or a sunflower yet, but we did get that red cabbage seed earlier. So that's the end of our spring. From here, we only have 28 boxes left to fill in the community center to complete it entirely. So let's move on to day one of summer. Very first thing we're going to do on day one is get our space ready to plant some crops. And then we're going to plant 10 wheat, six corn, six melons, a tomato, a poppy, a blueberry, hot pepper, red cabbage seed, and sunflower. Beautiful. Next, we're gonna go find the two summer forageables we didn't have already, the grapes and the sweet pea, and that will finish up the summer foraging bundle. Then going out to catch all of the summer fish that we can, we get the puffer fish completing the special fish bundle. We get the sturgeon completing the lake fish bundle, and we can get tuna and tilapia for the ocean fish bundle. Unfortunately, since it's not raining today, we can't get the red snapper. But that's okay, I'll use this rain totem I found today to ensure that it'll rain tomorrow so we can get it. Last thing we're gonna do is head to the secret woods to pick up a fiddlehead fern. I'm gonna pop that into the chef's bundle and that's all we can do today. So let's go ahead and head off to bed. Oh, what's this? A crop fairy? Smack dab into the middle of my 25 crops? Growing all 25 of them immediately? Who could have predicted that would happen? Well, with that, let's go ahead and harvest all of the crops that we've gotten here. Our six corn, our six melons, five of each being five gold star, and pause. 
With those five gold star melons and corn, those are the final items we needed to donate that couldn't be obtained from the traveling cart. If over the last month and two days we were able to get these 13 items that we were yet to get, and note that this bottom row could really be any three crops that didn't get grown by the fairy, if we got all 13 of these items, we'd be done. Summer 2nd. However unlikely it may be to get all of the fruit we needed from the cave, all of those items from the traveling cart, and a fairy on summer 1st smack dab in the middle of all of those important crops, What's important is that it's still possible. I'm sure a few of you may be saying that using the traveling cart so much is a bit of a cop-out, so let's run it again without using the cart even once. So, here we are again on summer 2nd and we're still missing those 13 items. Now on the next day, because Marnie's not open on Tuesday, we are going to buy a pig. Now you may be wondering, why didn't you include the truffle in your initial first month? Well, that's because along with building the barn and the coop and everything, getting the duck up to enough friendship to actually drop a duck feather, and then having the time for your pig to grow up, the way I figured it, there's just not enough days for it. So we excluded the truffle. Over the next few days, those three crops that we were growing that didn't get touched by the fairy are gonna grow and we'll be able to put them in the community center, completing whatever bundles they were for. That's pretty much it for the rest of the summer, but before we go into fall, we're going to put five winter roots into some seed makers to get winter seeds, and we're going to use a rain totem to ensure that it's raining the very first day of fall. Let's grab those winter seeds and head to bed. As we step out, we realize that rain totem didn't even work because it can't rain the very first day of a season, Oh well, that doesn't really change anything. First thing I'm doing is buying the three seeds I need to complete the fall crops bundle, and of course, planting them. Also on the first day, we're going to go and grab a hazelnut, and that'll complete the fall foraging bundle. And by now, our pig has finally given us that truffle, and that's going to complete the bulletin board bundles. And that completes our day, we're gonna head to bed. Now who could have guessed that this would happen? It's really serendipity when you think about it. Well, that's just something special. These three crops are the last things we need for the fall crops bundle, which means tomorrow we will have the greenhouse. Unfortunately for us, it's not as easy as summer this time, so I'm going to pop a rain totem, and tomorrow we're gonna wait for that greenhouse to come in so we can truly finish up everything we have left. So here we are on fall third. If you remember, we're still missing two of our winter forageables. So I'm going to plant some deluxe speed grow and put the winter seeds on them. And in a few days, those are going to grow up to be hopefully a snow yam and a crocus. Since it's rainy today though, we are able to go out and catch both a tiger trout and a walleye. And that's going to complete the fishing bundle. So, waiting for those to grow, here we are on Fall 8, thanks to both my agriculturalist profession and the or the hyperspeed grow that we placed under it, it'll all grow in 4 days instead of 7. So, let's head to the community center. With that, we can head to the last of the craft room bundles, snow yam, crocus, that is the final bundle to be completed. Now, if you also wanted to cut out the crop fairy from the equation, you would just push back the time nine days to give time for your pumpin pumpkin to grow, assuming you have the agriculturalist profession and you also used or hyper speed grow on that. Also as a note, we don't have deluxe speed grow yet because that's post community center for sure. If you have both of those on your pumpkin, it'll take another nine days to grow. And so your time to complete the community center without the crop fairy would be fall 17th. All of that being said, it is still an accomplishment to complete the community center within your first year, even if it does take you until winter. And it's still normal to complete it within the second or third or fourth or fifth or whatever year you want to complete it in. As a last note, this is absolutely super, super lucky, and I'd love to see someone actually do the run someday. Thank you all for watching, see you all in the next one and good night.